Hey collectors, welcome to Star Wars Collected. I'm Jonathan, this is my wife Michaela, and today we are gonna work together to build a mannequin for our giant life-size Wookiee build. Okay, so to build a duct tape mannequin, what you need are some old clothes. I didn't really have anything that I felt like I wanted to cut up, so I just went to a thrift store and found a, a giant sweatshirt hoodie, uh, and then some giant sweatpants, things that are even too big for me. And then you'll need two to three rolls of duct tape and a pair of scissors to cut through both the duct tape and sweatpants, so heavy duty scissors. And someone you trust to take scissors over your entire body to cut <laughs> you out, so choose wisely. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is actually attach the top to the bottom. So we're gonna put some duct tape around my midsection here, then we're gonna close up the wrists, and we're gonna close up the ankles so that they're nice and tight and they don't pull out all my wiki hair. Despite my best efforts to find something really long, it's still pretty short, so we'll end up doing some uh, arm and leg extensions to get our Wookiee to the full height that we need it. Uh, I specifically got a, a sweatshirt that had a hood on it. I don't think we're going to wrap the hood here. That sounds a little too claustrophobic for me, but um, this will allow me to later on wrap the hood and kind of give me a little bit more of a shape and a neck. Uh, so when I put stuff inside to give me a mannequin that has something to sit on. But from here, we're just gonna go ahead and pick a limb and uh, start wrapping me up. So, um, a mummy. Yeah, which, which <laughs> limb is your limb of choice? Probably your torso first. Well, torso first? That okay, we'll do a torso first. Let's go for it. So what do you guys usually do on a Tuesday night? This is pretty normal for us, just <laughs> wrapping each other in duct tape or you know whatever we have around. That was a secret! <laughs> I think we should put uh, Wedge and Tilly's X-Wing helmet on Michaela so she can fly around me and I'll pretend that I'm an AT-AT. She's wrapping me up to bring me down. I feel like I have a lot of power right now. You have a lot of power. <laughs> like a drunk at Like, oh, I'm flying this way, oh, I'm flying this way. Do you feel like you're wearing a corset? Yeah, I feel like I'm Vader and like I'm in his like leather suit that he has on. This must be what he feels like. This is a little bit tighter than I was intending. Yeah, it's starting to... Deep breaths aren't really an option at this point, just small, shallow ones. <laughs> Alright, so we have both my arms up here. I feel like the Winter Soldier on both sides. Um, it is relatively uncomfortable, honestly. Uh, we're going to do my chest last because uh, it, I can feel that it's like harder to breathe with it wrapped around my stomach. But that's just because Michaela's doing such a good job. So we're gonna do the legs next, and then uh, then we'll do the chest, and hopefully she'll cut me out if she likes me that much. Luckily, my uh, collection gallery is in the basement, so it's about 10 degrees cooler down here than it is upstairs. I feel like if I was in a normal room right now, I'd probably be very warm. I've seen other people do duct tape mannequins before, but they're always to kind of, you know, put it on a normal life-size human being. I haven't seen one where they try to make it a little bit longer. So that's what we're doing here. That's going to be a little bit different. And uh, you guys can follow along and we'll show you how we do it. This must be what Anthony Daniels feels like when he's C-3PO. Because it's got to feel very similar to this, where he has like really no way to move. And that's why his, you know, movements are so robotic somewhat because they have to be. This, I, that's what it feels like. I feel like I'm C-3PO yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Human-cyborg relations. <laughs> this is my counterpoint. <laughs> Michaela New. Oh, <laughs> so we reached the end of our first roll. Um, <clears throat> most of me is done. Uh, we still have to do my chest and shoulders. Um, maybe if you're a little bit shorter, you would make it all through with one roll, it's possible. Um, so we, uh, I grabbed a pack of three just to be on the safe side, but it looks like most people would probably be okay with uh, two rolls on this shirt. Does this have a length on it? Think about the packaging. Three rolls, 165 yards. yards. Okay, so these are three, 55 yard rolls. So somewhere maybe around you know, 75 yards or something like that we'll end up using here. So.
<laughs> that is what I said. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he spoke Shirok. All right, I am fully wrapped up now. I feel like the worst Christmas present ever. Uh, so we went through one and I don't know, maybe a quarter? Maybe a quarter. Maybe like a quarter a, an eighth. of another roll, uh, 55 yard rolls. So uh, probably more, probably bought more than what we need, but I'm also gonna use, use some of this for reinforcement. <laughs> Uh, so, um, now is the part where we find out whether my wife wants me back as a normal human being or not. Uh, <clears throat> we are going to try to cut me out of this. We'll start in the back of one of the legs and then uh, work our way up and then cut out the back. So the spine area and then see if I can get myself out. If not, we'll just end up cutting off the arms and stuff like that. So this should get interesting. I actually do really feel like an astronaut because like, I don't know if you've ever seen like the footage of them on the moon. They're kind of like are kind of like popping from yeah, side to side. Bouncing. That's how they found like that was the easiest way to get around. And I kind of feel like that. Like if this was the rest of my you life, like I could like probably make it work. Okay. Oh, you're poking another. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, you're showing your Ohio colors? Oh, 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 oh. The call of the Midwest. Oh, oh. Okay, now straight up the spine. Straight up the spine. Oh, oh, that's in my booty. Okay. <laughs> Guys, we bring this stuff to you for free, all right? You don't have to pay for this. My wife sticking scissors in my boot. <laughs> Your boot. Pants waistband is okay. a little thicker. Okay. Don't be afraid to apply a little force here. <laughs> yeah, just throw all the caution to the wind. If you hear any screams, it just means it's cutting. Don't pay attention to the screams. Okay, so I am most of the way out. I'm still gonna shield my naughty bit uh, with what's left here, but I went ahead and put a shirt on. Uh, so I think uh, we're, all we're left with is we're gonna do this leg real quick and then uh, I'll be free. All right, so I am completely out and free of my uh, duct tape cocoon here. Um, you know, really not too bad. Uh, it didn't... You did a good job. Oh, you did a good job. Uh, you know, I think uh, maybe having extra room in the waistband would have been better. Uh, I was making fun of these pants as being giant pants and I put them on and they actually like fit pretty well so <laughs> that made me feel great. Um, but you can take a look at our seaming here in the back, uh, all the way up one leg and then here. Uh, we didn't have to cut the hood off so that's good. And then we just did the one leg to the calf and then I was able to switch out of that. The arm about to the elbow and um, same on this side too. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll show you our little trip to Lowe's where we picked up things that we'll use for a skeleton for this. And then when we get that all squared away, we'll lengthen it and get it bigger and get some wookie on it. So uh, it's going to be good. All right, so we're here in Lowe's and we are in the PVC department. By we, I mean me and Mrs. Collected. <laughs> Always the enthusiastic so one. She's very excited to be spending her weekend in the aisle, the plumbing aisles of Lowe's. So we're putting together all the different individual pieces. Um, I think the pose that I kind of want to go for is something where the arm is out a little bit here, holding the bow caster and the hand is like this. So we're trying to put that together. So we have our, uh, you know, we have our feet here, our hip bone. This is our, uh, what's part of this? Pelvis. <laughs> our pelvis. <laughs> um, and this is kind of coming out to like our sternum sort of. So then this is the right shoulder. Uh, actually that's the left shoulder. So it'll go straight down and then straight again at the elbow. And then we'll be able to rotate off of this as well as the wrist area just by, you know, putting it in and putting a screw and something like that. There's laughing behind the camera. Uh, but then this arm, I don't think would look great if it's like this. This would look too much like a toy soldier. So we're going to pop that one out a little bit. So we're going to do a 45 degree angle on that one right here. And then we are still going to keep that elbow joint nice and tight with a 90 degree. So Ooh. this is our miniature baby Chewbacca. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna use one and a half inch PVC. We looked at a couple different options. Uh, one inch and one and a quarter looked a little too small. Two inch was getting a little big. So we're gonna do one and a half. Uh, we're gonna use two of these um, because, here we go. We're making a jousting part here. Watch out. 
uh, because uh, I think one would be too short. <laughs> one would be too short. Uh, maybe two is, is more than what we need, uh, but this will give us plenty of opportunities to lengthen the legs, lengthen the arms, uh, a little bit beyond what my own legs and arms are. We have about seven to eight inches that we need to make up between my height and Chewbacca's actual height. Uh, I'm very lucky that I actually am within, <laughs> I'm very lucky that I'm somewhat within his, his realm that I, uh, a cast of me will work. So we have all our uh, pieces, we have our pipes, so we're just gonna go pay for them or steal them. I don't know which, but probably pay for them. Oh, you outlaw. Oh my God. Is that a line? Oh, no, no, you scallywag. Scoundrel. Scoundrel. Scallywag. Yes. <laughs> you nerf herder. Nerf herder. That's what oh, I was going for. Go. He's a nerf herder. First, it was a Star Wars tattoo. Nah. Now, he's giving up my weekend. Just kidding, it's only a small portion of time. Not the first time. This woman went to Star Wars Celebration with me in 2019. Yeah. She stood in line for the stupid Star Wars Celebration store. Nine hours? For, I think it was, it was like nine or 12 hours. <laughs> uh, just so I could buy some like plushies or something. And then the next day we could just like walk in. So this one was the same. Right. <laughs> now we have to make sure uh, 10 feet of pipe fits inside of our kind of small SUV. But uh, better this car than my car. So we'll make it work. <laughs> Perfect fit. We are going to take those PVC pipes now and cut them down. So from my research, what I've been able to tell, uh, I'm six foot seven, but Chewbacca is about a foot taller than me still. Uh, so we will need to lengthen my, um, my legs so that my height is, you know, seven and a half feet tall almost. Um, and then we'll lengthen my arms a little bit too so that it doesn't look too imbalanced. Uh, so I've got these very long PVC pipes here and we're gonna start cutting them down and taking some measurements and uh, you know, building our bones, our, our Wookiee bones. So I've gone ahead here and laid out my, my you know, human Wookiee pelt. Some Trandoshan out there I'm sure would love to get their hands on this. Uh, so we're gonna use this pelt here, my skin, uh, basically as a way to take the measurements uh, and just lengthen everything by about a foot or so, uh, but I'll have to kind of build a skeleton as we go. It's going pretty well. Uh, you can see I've got a lot of skeleton. You can see how long those legs have to be. Um, my measurements are pretty close. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because I'm measuring sort of a, across here and then the head is still gonna sit uh, kind of you know up a little bit. He doesn't have like a huge neck, but somewhat, and I don't completely know. So uh, right now he was standing about seven foot four, which is pretty close. Uh, and that would be if the, um, you know, the head was basically sitting right on top of sort of this area. Um, so not really counting in the fact that there's a neck and stuff like that. So uh, my guess is that I will probably just leave it as it is and uh, adjust the neck and things like that as I need to. One thing that I'm gonna try to keep in mind here is at least with human anatomy, our wingspan is basically the same as our height. So I'm gonna to try to figure out between all the shoulder joints and the, you know, sort of the collarbone area that I've built, if the arms are completely straight out, they need to be, you know, about seven and a half feet tall. So that's gonna be what I measure next, see if I can come somewhat close to that. And that way his proportions will be about right. All right, collectors, I have a skeleton. There's no bones about it. There is my Wookiee skeleton. Just to give you a perspective here, once again, I'm six, seven, and uh, I am just coming up to, uh, a little bit beyond his shoulder, or what is kind of actually kind of be more like a collarbone kind of across here. So you can see he's a pretty tall boy. Um, you can see the arms here sort of at an angle. My idea is that he's going to hold his bandolier and I wanted the one arm to kind of be out a little bit more while the other arm is sort of cradling and holding it just like this. So uh, that is why it looks the way it does, kind of mid dance move. Um, I might have to come back later and trim off a little bit more of the forearm uh, because of hands. Uh, it just kind of depends on what I end up using for hands, how big those end up being, things like that. But 
right now we got ourselves a little skeleton so we'll see if we can't get it inside of our skin here and uh, then it comes down to padding it up kind of building some muscles and things like that uh, which will take a little bit more time Another day on the Chewy build here, and uh, today we are going to try to give him some muscle structure and give him a little bit of meat to his bones and things like that, fill him out a little bit. So here is our mannequin and our bones. And one of the perks about uh, blowing all your money on Star Wars things are that you end up with a lot of packaging material. So we have this whole box full of uh, bubble wrap and hopefully a little bit of foam and things like that. So we will start putting some things on him and see if we can't fill him out a little bit. So you can see structurally I need to build out quite a few things here. So we've got this you know, torso area here that we need to really fill out. You know, we've got these hip bones on here that we can set some things on and then it kind of builds up until we hit the shoulders up in there. So uh, hopefully we can fill that out pretty well with some bubble wrap or something of that nature. When we come down here to the legs, we will have to just sort of make, uh, you know, calf muscles and things like that. So I'm basically just gonna follow human anatomy considering it was, you know, Peter or Jonas inside the suit, you know, 99% of the time. So, uh, you know, between uh, the different packaging materials that we have here, things like that, I feel like these would make, you know, some decent muscles around the legs. So uh, I do have a little bit of concern about using air. Uh, and I don't, th these I've had for a long time, uh, but it's possible that these will deflate over time too. So I have some concern with that. Uh, but it's what I have available to me that's completely free. So worst case scenario is in a little while I have a little bit of a deflated looking Wookiee. And I'll come back in with some foam and, and do it again. Okay, I think we've got the first leg done here. All just using bubble wrap materials. You know, it might not be the uh, most anatomically correct, especially this little thing right here. Uh, but it's looking uh, pretty good. Um, so we've got sort of, I just sort of like threw the sweatpant leg up there. So if I bring that down, it's gonna drape over top like this. We're obviously gonna have to extend it because I am not seven and a half feet tall despite my best efforts. Um, and then in the back here, you know, it might end up being a little larger than uh, what my leg is. Um, you know, you can see it side by side here, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's okay too. Cause you know, we'll have it good on the front and then all I'll have to do is just sort of uh, bring in some more duct tape here and close that gap on there and we'll have ourselves a good skin. So uh, feeling pretty good about that first leg and I'll just duplicate it on the other side and uh, we'll go from there. I've decided to go ahead and cut this other leg on this side. Uh, originally I was going to just sort of leave that one alone and I was able to sort of step in and out of it. But as I built this leg, uh, you'll see that it doesn't quite, you know, reach. There's going to be a little bit of a gap there that I'll, I'll have to go over with some tape. Uh, and I don't want the two legs to look uneven, like you skip leg day on one side, but not on the other side. Uh, so I'm going to give that a quick little cut here. And uh, then once it's all pieced back together, uh, you know, I'll just tape it back up and it'll look fine. So uh, on to leg two. Both legs are done and stuffed at this point. I think they're looking pretty good too. I think we've got uh, some good volume there, you know, there's a little bit of a calf muscle and some knees. Um, so I think the definition is pretty good, especially for something that's just gonna get covered up with a bunch of hair. But you know, I want there to be some sort of atomically correct muscle structure underneath. Uh, I was playing a little bit with how I might do the feet. Um, I'm thinking that I might just end up Stopping it with more of these, uh, maybe two of these on either side of the pipe might be uh, sufficient enough to kind of fill up the boot area. But I'm also not completely sure whether I want to do that yet or not. I might leave the feet kind of for last because uh, I might end up having to stabilize it somehow um, further than what it already is. So my next big sort of conundrum at this point is figuring out how I am going to do this main body cavity. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I'd buy that foam. Uh, but that foam's pretty expensive. I don't really want to do that. Um, so I have a little bit of foam here. Um, 
I'll just have to kind of figure it out from there. So uh, we'll be discovering together. One thing I also decided was that I have this T joint up here, but I want to swap that out for a cross joint or an X joint or whatever they call it, uh, because that will allow me to put another PVC pipe on there and get a little bit of height on my hood uh, and also help hold up the chewy head. So I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with. Never really built a, a wiki mannequin before. So uh, we'll call that part of our growing pain. So I think I'll head out real quick, get that. Uh, so that way I'm all squared away with that. Uh, and that way, if I, it becomes hard to take apart or something like that, uh, I'm not sort of, you know, screwed out of that, choosing that decision later. So uh, hands are the other things I'll have to figure out how I'm going to build those hand structures. Um, you know, it might make sense to just sort of use one of those like those uh, when I was in art school we had these like hand things I didn't have them but the other people that had them uh, that would uh, you know you could kind of move the hand around because hands are notoriously hard to draw and things of that nature so I might do something like that I've seen some people build them before out of like using some metal and some plastic it's cool but it, it takes a long time for them to do that so I had to figure that part out uh, but and it also helped to get the bodysuit on there to figure out how long are the sleeves I don't want to have a uh, a gap with a little bit of PVC pipe showing up before the uh, before the gloves go on. So uh, still a lot of things to explore. I'm gonna run out real quick, get that different joint in there, and uh, then figure out how to fill up that main body cavity. But I'm pretty pleased with it right now, even though it's got this little little butt flap hanging down here. What do you guys think? Does Chewy have a big butt? Should I give him like some like really gluteus maximus type muscles in the back? I do like big wookie butts. I cannot lie. All right, cross joint acquired. I had to have a guy go up on a ladder to find it. Of course, they had every other little cross joint for every other size, but the one and a half that I'm using, they didn't have out on the shelf. Anyway, we've got it now. So we're gonna swap out this piece up here with this so that way I can give Chewy a neck and something to stabilize his head. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Maybe because I didn't see it because I didn't have him out. So uh, we'll blame it on Lowe's, right? So uh, we're gonna swap that in real quick and then I'm gonna move on to padding up that body. I don't know if this is brilliant or not, but I decided to kind of line the inside of it with some uh, sort of thin foam that I had. Uh, I was a little bit concerned that he might end up looking a little lumpy in the body. Um, so I kind of thought maybe if I had this on there that I could almost kind of just stuff him a little more randomly uh, without having to worry too much about, you know, giving him a pot belly or uneven pectorials or something like that. So uh, I feel like that kind of might help smooth him out a little bit. Also gives like a little bit more structure to his body so far from what I can tell. So I'm just going to keep rolling with that. So I think I'm going to kind of like largely just sort of stuff him around <laughs> at this point. Uh, maybe I'll do that kind of one side and the other side and, and join them together. But uh, I don't know. We're just figuring it out, guys. You're along for the ride. Chewbacca has a torso at this point. Uh, we're looking at the back of the mannequin here. Uh, so you can see that I have made him a little bit uh, larger than myself. That's why there's a little bit of a gap here. Uh, but overall, I'm trying to keep him kind of spelt. You know, Chewbacca, he's a big dude, but uh, you know, when you look at him, especially in A New Hope and stuff like that, he's actually pretty skinny. So I try to build the chest here a little bit, just to poke out a little bit build up around the collarbone just a little bit. The more I look at this, and I'm thinking I might actually slip the uh, Ruby's costume on over top of it right now, just to get an idea of what it looks like, how it fits. So I'm pretty excited. Hopefully these uh, arms are not too long or he's not too tall and it reaches pretty far, uh, but there's kind of only one way to find out. You know, really not too bad. Um, it was a little bit of a struggle to get the suit onto him. Uh, it is sort of just at that limit of fitting. Um, and it's height wise, it's kind of the, the crotch to the shoulders. That's kind of the limiting factor at this point. Uh, I haven't placed the feet on there as it should be, but I think the hair is gonna be just long enough to hide that gap. So that's great. Um, I don't have a whole lot of extra space with these gloves and things like that, a little bit more. So the hands are gonna have to be about where they are right now, but you know, coming from the side, anything like that, it doesn't really look too out of proportion. Um, I would say the biggest negative right now is that 
Chewbacca, you know, I kind of like to think of him as like a big muscular type, you know, Bigfoot guy, but he's really skinny, especially in A New Hope. He is just a, a skinny little Wookiee. Um, so right now he looks a little wide. Um, and if I come back in here and I, I give him a nice little tailoring at the waist, it kind of helps bring a little bit of shape into him. So I don't know if there's a way for me to maybe fill out the back of the suit a little bit more or the front of the suit, um, which would be beyond my own dimensions. But I don't want to make him look too rotund, but having too much extra fur around him is also not going to make it look like Chewbacca. So um, I think this is where I'm going to leave us for today. Uh, you know, the arms have not had anything filled out on them, but honestly, like, they look good. Um, I don't really have an issue with how those arms look. Uh, again, he's a skinny guy, and with the arms sort of being on the outside, uh, they're kind of creating the structure that we need. And this way, he's a lot easier to, to move in and out. I am glad that I think the shoulders filled out nicely. I think he looks like, uh, you know, appropriate in size there. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good about him. Um, you know, if I had a recommendation, if you're trying to duplicate this at home, I don't know what I would do. Uh, this is the extra large ruby suit. And I think you need that for the the shoulder to crotch measurement to make a, a full size Chewbacca. I could be wrong. Maybe they didn't adjust that. Um, it's, it's the fact that the chest and the waist are pretty large on this. So what would be super interesting to do would be to take this one off and put on the standard size that Ruby's offers and see if it still has the same measurements this way, uh, but is maybe more svelte, uh, because that would be the one thing that I'm not loving about this. What I might end up doing is in the back, maybe uh, having Mrs. Collected move the buttons for me. So instead of them being right at the edge, maybe they're further inside. Uh, and then that kind of helps me, uh, you know, make him look a little bit more lean. But uh, honestly, not bad. I'm enjoying this project. This is fun. Uh, I can't wait to have life-size Chewbacca here right next to Life size on solo, uh, and they can, you know, hop in the Millennium Falcon there with a DL44 and uh, go smuggle some stuff. So, uh, collectors, if you enjoy videos like this, please give me a like. If you enjoy videos, more videos like this, uh, please subscribe. Uh, we have new videos here all the time where we're building all kinds of weird stuff and doing all kinds of weird things. So, uh, also follow us on Instagram, lots of cool stuff going on there too. All right, see you guys. <laughs> hey, collectors. hey collectors <laughs> hey collectors hey collectors welcome yeah. to star wars yeah. collected that's right okay you gotta do the hand thing okay hey 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 collectors <laughs> <laughs> welcome to star wars <laughs> it's always one hand not two hands <laughs> okay you're, like, you're, you're gonna be... scare them at home no i wanted to be Beauty. Extravagant. Okay. Hey collectors, welcome to Star Wars Collected. I'm ah. Michaela. <laughs> hey collectors. <laughs> this seems so unnatural. I don't ever do this. <laughs> You're doing it like go-go gadget. Okay. Like just put your arm up like this. <laughs> hey collectors. My name is Jonathan and this is my wife Michaela. She's so supportive of my insane uh, hobbies? It's only because his hair is so big. <laughs>